I'm Eve Bernard Jordan here with Onyx News. We have Dr. U.A. Thompson, and we're going to just discuss some things concerning black economics. Dr. U.A. Thompson, we've gotten some disturbing figures concerning the black community. We understand that in the Asian community, the dollar stays for 30 days. In the Jewish community, 20 days. The white community, 17 days. In the black community, six hours. Dr. U.A. Thompson, the president of Urban Divinity School, what would you say about these disturbing numbers? I would say they lend themselves to some serious mental and economic slavery occurring in black America. Uh, if you look at black America, in 2010, we had a collective buying power of $961 billion. In 2018, that number rose to 1.3 trillion, with a T, dollars. Wow. It is estimated by 2020, we will have a collective buying power of $2 trillion. And for all of that money to only circulate itself within our community, among our own, for only six hours is a disgrace. It is a shame and it's sad. And we have to figure out for ourselves what must be done to leverage this economic field so that we can participate at a larger level to rebuild our own infrastructure, to rebuild our own communities. Wow. We command so a we're lot looking of dollars. Here, yeah. So we're looking here at economic slavery. I mean, it looks like that we're being enslaved through the dollar. And um, we know that when we look at certain traditions, money begins to become the fuel or the thing that becomes a resource that can keep something going. Once you cut off the resource, then you've actually have stopped the movement or the motion of a group or an organization of people. So African Americans are totally just about at a standstill when you see these disturbing numbers like Asians, 30 days, Jews, 20 days, 17 days for whites six hours for African-Americans. And it sounds like that maybe African-Americans dollars only being spent possibly in church, barbershops, and maybe whatever possibly black owned restaurants or hair salon. Entertainment, yes. Well, I almost never use uh, economic slavery without also tying it to a mental slavery because there's something diametrically wrong in the psyche of black America when we refuse to support our own, when we refuse to uh, support those businesses that are black owned within our communities, when we refuse to buy the block back and settle for gentrification, when we refuse to help build entrepreneurs in our community, when we refuse to do things that are uh, self conducive for our race and for our people. I worry about how uh, we are so eager to uh, help the Asians through hair and nail products. Uh, we, we have a wow. over dramatization of that. I'm concerned about how we would rather help uh, these white companies by participating in the buying of Nikes and all these other expensive shoes uh, that we stand in line for and, and wait uh, on for hours and sometimes days to get but yet we, we will not uh, build up or try to collectively create our own brand. Uh, something is wrong mentally. There, 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 there is something that is uh, totally disconnected in, in the thinking. And, and, and that could be the result of the Willie Lynch letter or whatnot. But I think we have to also examine uh, economic slavery in conjunction with mental slavery because we are made to buy what we buy. We are made to act the way we act. And until we break free of that, we're truly not free at all. Wow. And you know, this is um, some real ontology and that's the you know, science of being that when we look at, right. you know, what I be is up to me, but we are where I would like to say and leave this with people today that your mind is the only bank there is. 
and you're buying with the currency of your mind. So if you're not doing business with us, by us, when there's an opportunity there, and I mean, we recently did a story about a church, and we'll probably have to pick this segment up again at another time, but how churches would go to a white-owned network versus going to black-owned networks. Dr. U.A. Thompson, it's always great doing reporting with you. Thank you. I'm E. Bernard Jordan here with Onyx News.